The untamed and wild forests of Canada are as beautiful as they are vast, as isolated as they are mysterious. Many strange tales have come from these forgotten and otherwise tranquil places. I have some of my own. Stay tuned. Hello fellow outsiders and welcome to today's episode. This is a milestone moment and that is because this channel has now reached over 10,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers, 30,000 subscribers, 40,000 subscribers. You guessed it, 50,000 subscribers. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm so thankful for all of you tuning in on a regular basis, for liking, commenting, sharing my videos, getting them out there it makes a big difference. Uh, this channel wouldn't be where it is today without the support of the outsider community. So uh, thank you so much. Now for my milestone episodes, I like to do something a little bit different. Uh, so for this episode, I decided that I would share a couple of the strangest experiences that I've ever had while out in the bush. But before I get to that, I've just got a couple pieces of news that I wanna share with you. Uh, first of all, some of you may not know but uh, there is a Facebook page uh, for the Outsider channel as well. Um, and on the Facebook page, I post all the videos that I do on YouTube, but as well, I also post a ton of pictures uh, on a weekly basis, at least I try to. And they are usually hints at episodes that are yet to come. And so if you check the Facebook page out, if you like it, then you'll get notifications as to what I've been up to behind the scenes and you'll kind of have a bit of the inside scoop as to what is going to happen later on down the line. Now, I know some people don't have Facebook, um, but you can still go to the Facebook page and see what the Outsider page is all about. The only difference is, is that you won't be able to like the page and therefore, therefore won't be able to get notifications as to what's happening, so you'll have to check in manually every once in a while. So there you go, that's the only difference. Uh, whether you have Facebook or not, you can check out the page and I'm gonna put a link for that in the description below. And moving on now, there is something that I've been so excited to tell all of you. Uh, you'll remember that during the winter time, I made an announcement and I said that my wife and I were expecting a child uh, this fall. And uh, so we have a little girl now. Uh, she was six pounds, seven ounces, and she is beautiful. So we just love her so much. And I just, I just wanted to tell you guys that that's it. So <laughs> uh, being a dad is such a cool adventure and um, it's exciting and terrifying at the same time. And even though I am super low on sleep right now, it is so worth it. Anyways, there you go. That is what I've been dying to tell you for a while now, but I just didn't have the chance. At this point, I would just like to give a big shout out and a big thank you to the flashlight company through night for setting me up with a great line of flashlights. Uh, lately, I've been using the V5 Catapult, which is a super rugged design, um, super solid aluminum. I consider these kind of like, um, like a security flashlight. Uh, it can take a beating. Uh, it can be used for self-defense. This is actually quite comparable to the famous mag flashlights. But when you line these two up together, uh, they're both made to be tough, made to take a beating. Again, can be used for self-defense. But the highest powered mag flashlight on the market today maxes out at just under 700 lumens, which is very respectable. But this V5 catapult actually maxes out at 1200 lumens. So almost double the output of the mag flashlight. And so this is awesome when you're in the dark. Uh, when you get into higher powered, higher quality flashlights such as these, uh, they really settle into one of two categories. You can get the, um, the floods or the throwers. And what I mean by that is the floodlights or the flood flashlights, they cast a lot of light uh, in the immediate vicinity. So you can see a lot of what's going on around you. Uh, and then there's also the throwers, which they have a very tight and narrow beam and they're meant to spot things far away, basically like, like, a, like a spotlight. And uh, so this falls into the thrower category, which is why it's called the catapult. It throws a beam of light over 830 meters away. I wasn't in a field big enough to test the distance, but um, I was shining it on the tree line when I was out uh, a couple nights ago. 
and I know that I was about 250 meters away from the tree line and it was lighting the trees up no problem. And there was one point where I was in a, a really huge opening and I was 500 meters away from the tree line and I know that because I took a GPS measurement. From 500 meters away, I was still hitting the tree line, which is uh, half a kilometer away. So uh, this really stands up to the specs. Again, I didn't even get in a spot that was big enough to try the max distance, but even at 500 meters, that is an amazing distance for a flashlight such as this. Something that I'm very thankful that Through Night throws in with this flashlight is a really high quality holster. Uh, this is a larger flashlight and it's nice that I can just hang it on my belt and, and go. Uh, that way I don't have to dig it out of my backpack when I need it and have to try and put it away um, when I'm done with it. It's just right on my hip and I can grab it. Uh, no problem there. So I really appreciate the holster as well. So uh, there you go. Great flashlight. If you want to check it out, I'm going to put a link in the description below. They're a great company. Um, so thanks again to Through Night. Moving on to the strangest experiences that I've had while out in the bush. In Northern Ontario, far removed from the cities of the south, the land is truly wild. Humans are the guests. It was in the north that I lived in a mining town. Whenever I got the chance, I would hop on my dirt bike and explore a new logging trail. Well, new to me, but forgotten to most everyone else. The logging trails in the area are extensive and unmapped. After the machines that created them had come and gone, the trails were left for the forest to eventually reclaim. The newer roads are big enough for a pickup truck to drive down, while the oldest ones have been whittled down to mere footpaths. These paths were my gateway into a world where there were more bears, moose, wolves, cougars, and lynx per square kilometer than there were humans. Like I said before, we are the guests in such places. I could drive as deep into the bush as my dirt bike's gas tank would allow. It was down these vanishing pathways that I would often discover a hidden gem of one kind or another. Sometimes I would come across an abandoned cabin, spot a bear, find a new lake, locate a blueberry patch, or stumble upon the ruins of an abandoned mining operation. I once found an abandoned military-style truck that had been converted into a hunter's bunkhouse. It must have been there for several decades at least, considering that it was enclosed by a stand of mature trees, which obviously grew up after the truck had been driven in. But this isn't the strange encounter that I'm talking about. No, it happened on a different day, when I was hiking on a similar trail with my friend. After walking for an hour or two down a trail I had recently discovered, I suddenly heard a strange noise to our right. It was faint enough that I almost missed it at first, but a couple seconds later I heard it again. It almost sounded human. I signaled to my friend to stop walking so that I could listen more carefully. The noise came once again. It sounded like a scream. My friend heard it that time, and we looked at each other in shock. We both agreed that it sounded like a small child calling for help from deep within the brush. Hello? I called back. Where are you? The breeze had picked up slightly, and so we strained to listen. This time we heard a chorus of voices call back. A group of high-pitched cries for help. What are a group of children doing out here? I asked. My friend shrugged in astonishment. The area that we were in was isolated. We were surrounded with hundreds of kilometers of bush in all directions, with only one way back into town. I've only ever run into one other human being while exploring these trails, and he was a hunter. Which is why I'm sure you can imagine my confusion at hearing a group of children calling from somewhere within the endless ocean of pines. I had trouble believing what I was hearing, but my friend and I left the trail and waded into the thicket toward the group of voices that kept calling out to us. 
Are you all right? I shouted back to them, but the voices just kept repeating, help, help, help. My friend and I did our best to keep our bearings as we pressed forward. The last thing we needed was to be lured off the path only to get lost ourselves, which happens all too commonly in these types of conditions. The cries for help grew louder and clearer until we couldn't draw any closer. What I mean is, we couldn't draw any closer to the voices because we realized they weren't coming from the ground. They were coming from above. We cocked our heads back and gazed upward into the trees. It was then that we discovered the source of these cries. Turns out, it wasn't children at all. Within the pines, there was a stand of hardwoods that had long since died, dried out, and lost their bark. One of the trees had broken and was leaning against the trunks of the rest. Whenever the slightest breeze hit this dead stand of trees, their trunks would slowly rub against the fallen one. The dried wood let out a long whine whenever it moved against another point of dry wood on the neighboring group of dead trees. But not only did it let out a whine, and this part might be hard to explain, but it whined with the exact kind of inflection that a human voice would call for help in. My friend and I stood in awe of how much this group of trees could sound so human. I have heard trees groan under their own weight in a windstorm, and I have listened to a whole forest of pine trunks loudly popping in minus 40 degree weather. But to this day, I have never heard a tree sound so human that it sent shivers down my spine. And that is just one of the strange experiences that I've had while out in the bush. I've taken enough time telling you this one, and so although I promised to share a couple stories, I think I'll save the next one for a future episode. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like me to share another strange story, let me know, and I'll share it in the next milestone video of 60,000 subscribers. Has anything strange happened to you while out in the bush? Why not share it in the comments below? Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there, my friends, and I'll catch you next time.